everybody, Ben Wood here with another falconry video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what to feed your bird. Uh, specifically, I'm going to be talking about this Merlin, uh, but I'm going to talk in general terms as well. Now, what you feed your bird is very important, and it can be kind of gruesome at times uh, because you're having to deal with meat and feathers and blood and guts and all that kind of stuff because these are birds of prey. They prey on other animals to survive. That's what they do. And no matter how politically correct you want to view it and say, oh, I don't like that. You're allowed to not like that, but it's what the birds do. Now you could say, well, I think it's wrong that you would do that. The birds would, if humans went extinct today, then tomorrow birds of prey would still be killing and hunting and eating. It is what they do, it is nature, and it's kind of foolish for us to think otherwise. There's nothing wrong with a person not wanting to be around that, if you can't stomach that. But it is nature, and we are part of nature. Uh, in falconry, we have the chance to be able to be a part of that. And part of that is dealing with the food. Now, falconry is a hunting sport, but it's really where you're getting your bird out and letting them do what they do in the wild. So in the wild every day, this Merlin was hunting and killing on its own. I'm training her to be able to go uh, back to doing that and just come home with me when she's done. So it's just having her be as close to a wild bird as possible. Now part of that comes with diet. In the wild, birds of prey will eat as much as they can as often as they can because they don't know when their next meal is going to be. In when we're training them, we try to get cut the weight down and get rid of the fat and start building up the muscle and find a good weight where you can have the best of both worlds. And so that can determine your type of food. Now there's a wide range of food. There's some food that some people view as almost junk, things like beef heart that are almost just filler. Uh, there's things like cockerels, you know, day old chicks that you can buy frozen. Uh, those can, uh, some people say those, some people that's all they fly their bird with. And other people say it's not a good food source for long term. It's good during the molt, but not during the rest of the year. Uh, there's people who use quail, which that's my favorite thing to use is Japanese quail, Katernic quail, you buy them frozen. And again, if this seems strange to you, if you've ever been to a zoo, all of those animals behind the scene are eating these same things that falconers are feeding their birds. There's entire food, and just as there are poultry industries to raise chickens to feed humans, there is similarly an entire industry raising quail, both to feed humans and animals. You can buy frozen quail to feed yourself. There are quail eggs from the same species that are purchased. Uh, I like to eat those fairly regularly. I found a nice Asian market that has those available. Um, but they're also for zoos and aviaries and wildlife centers and for falconers. And there's, of course, the last thing, which is you know, wild caught stuff. So this Merlin right now, she's sitting on a sparrow, a plucked sparrow that I got for her. Now, how this works is in the United States, uh, the, the English sparrows and European starlings are non-native invasive birds that cause a lot of damage. They're not protected and the government actually likes it if we hunt them with our birds. You can also trap them and use them to feed your birds. Now, this is again, this is a Merlin, which is a bird with very high metabolism and that factors into the choice of food. So some people, a lot of Merlin guys I know, they only feed wild food. They're like, it's nutrient dense because this bird's gonna eat everything. It's gonna eat all the, all the body parts, all the guts, all the, all the bones bit by bit. Very nutrient dense food. I agree with that and that makes sense. I agree with that logic. But the thing is, for me, I want just perfection when it comes to the weight management. I wanna know I feed my bird to the gram this much at flying time and then the, at, at the next day at flying time it's going to be this i feed it up to this up down up to this and usually the merlins i fly that ends up being about 20 grams of food and usually for me a quail leg will do that now if my falcon catches something big like if she goes out and catches a pigeon i'm gonna let her crop up on it and get some good 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 food out of it big reward but otherwise just day-to-day -day feeding i prefer to use quail because of management reasons. And then in the off season, if this Merlin is molting, then I'll do other foods that, that have a wider nutrient range. So in other words, uh, normally I would be feeding her quail and feeding maybe a little bit of Vitahawk sprinkled on every day. And then rest of the year, I'm gonna do a mix of things like, uh, you know, 
you know, again, just you, you, starlings are good too. But again, I just find like a quail leg is about the perfect amount. And a lot of people will agree with me and a lot of people will completely disagree. And that's okay. I'm just telling you what I do. Now in the summer, you're trying to have your bird fat and happy. You're trying to ha push as many calories through as possible so that they molt quickly. So you want nutrient rich food, but you also, it's okay to have more filler. So that's when I'll do things more like I will supplement with some beef heart. Um, cockerels are a very rich fattening food. I don't like using cockerels normally during the normal hawking season, but I do love to use them uh, during the molt. It's something the bird can swallow whole. The calcium in those day old chicks is very soluble. It's very easy for their body to directly turn it back into calcium and into keratin to make in new feathers and to replenish their bones, all that kind of stuff. So what you feed your bird very much matters. But again, with a Merlin, um, nutrient wise, if you're feeding, you know, wild caught sparrows and starlings, that's really good for them. Uh, but if, you know, if you're just looking at strictly weight management, for me personally, I find that, uh, quail, you know, captive bred, frozen, purchased Japanese quail, uh, Coturnic quail, Japanese quail. That's, that's my favorite choice, uh, just for reliability. So think it through talk to the experts in your area and it depends on what bird you are flying and again when you get a new bird you're gonna have uh some some difference in the metabolism because whatever they were eating you're gonna be feeding them something new so it's normal that when you first get them their metabolism is gonna drop and, and plummet and be like ah they're gonna be burning through calories and even on that exact same food source you know, give it, give it a week or two and all of a sudden it's going to level out and it'll be good. So, uh, I've had red tailed hawks that I was feeding like 150, almost 200 grams a day, uh, when I first caught them. And then, you know, within a week they were down to like 40 grams a day or 50 grams a day. So it, it's amazing how fast it can happen, but she looks like she's been a little spooked. I've had her out here in the teepee for the first time and she's not quite sure about this. She's keeping her on me. So she didn't eat while we were talking. You want to eat any of that? Do you want to eat that? She's like, no, I'm too busy watching you. So hope you found that interesting. And again, consult the falconers in your area because they're going to know what sort of temperature and humidity your bird is being subjected to. And they're going to know what food sources are available. And it's always good. Remember, there's, there's more than one way to do things, but it's still good to listen to the expert opinion of others and to understand the logic behind them. Follow those ways and then kind of figure things out from there on your own on what's going to work well for you and for your bird. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed seeing the progress with this Merlin. And as always, happy hawking. Mm -hmm.